Hey, Jeff, um, you know, we've been going through quite a discussion now on, on DNS. I think I'm understanding kind of how it works, how right. to get it set up and running. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering now, since we're going to be talking about DNS zones, if you could give me a little bit more of an understanding of why they're such a critical part to the DNS infrastructure. Yeah, well, well, DNS zones represent a foundational piece, really, to the DNS server role in Windows Server 2012. I mean, the zone is essentially the area of the DNS namespace for which the DNS server is responsible. So for this reason, one of the first steps of configuring the DNS server involves the creation of these zones. Different types of zones are used in various scenarios. Now there are also many options to configure in relation to DNS zones, and these are all things that an administrator needs to be familiar with and which we will go through in this section. DNS servers are configured for the purpose of answering client queries for name resolution. Now the DNS server must be configured with a zone to be considered authoritative and provide local answers to client computers. A DNS server that does not have any configured zones is essentially a caching only server capable only of forwarding queries on behalf of clients to other name servers. Now, while this is a possible configuration, it is certainly not the norm. Most DNS servers are configured with zones. As administrators, we need to be familiar with the process of aging and scavenging. These processes are used to prevent stale records from accumulating, which can be the cause of numerous problems. Inaccurate DNS resource records can result in network communications that fail due to having invalid IP addresses and or host names. Aging is the process by which the DNS server will automatically mark a record as stale after a particular period of time. <laughs> 